overtime loss in the rivalry game against Oklahoma State. So the Sooners want to get back on track. And for the Pokes, back-to-back big-time wins. Not only to win the rivalry game against OU, Fran, but they backed up a win against Texas Tech as well. Back-to-back overtime victories for Oklahoma State. So they're feeling it right now, and it is the right time of year to be playing your best basketball. No doubt, one of the hottest teams in the Big 12. They started one and three, Bob. Keep that in mind. One thing about Cade is he's getting started earlier and earlier in games. Nice pass. And he sets up Caleb Boone for the game's first points. He's six foot eight, Bob. So depending on how you guard him in pick and roll, whether you trap him or hard edge him, he can see still see over the trap. The X Factor might be Brady Manick, not only for tonight, but for any hopes Oklahoma has down the stretch to get his complimentary scoring back to Austin Reeves, who tries a step back three here. That hit the backboard first. There is Manick, though, setting up Davion Harmon, who hits the triple, and that gives OU the early lead. Well, Davion Harmon is playing great basketball off the ball this year as a two guard. He's been red hot lately. Cut to the goal, beautiful to find. As Rondell Walker lays it in off the assist from Cunningham. This is a young Cowboy basketball team, one of the youngest in the country. That's a big one early for Manny. No question, Bob. He was 10 of 40 since he's come back from his COVID break. And we're talking a guy who, in his career, shoots nearly 40% behind the arc. Alon Kruger in his 10th year at OU and talking to him yesterday friend he was trying to keep in perspective a home loss to Oklahoma State in overtime but I think he knows he needs some more production from a couple of guys in particular Manic, if they're going to have the end of the year that they're hoping for there's no doubt Bob this team is a surprise remember what they did in late January and early February and uh, you got to make those if you're Austin Reeves he gets to the basket easily the rebound away in traffic and wrapping a pass around is Walker and he sets up Boone. How about Caleb Boone? Last eight games he's shooting 70% from the field. Only a sophomore. Five of their top six scores are underclassmen. Floater from Harmon crawls over the front of the rim. How about this, Bob? This kid in his last 12 games is shooting 64% inside the arc. He has been red hot getting to the basket. Good example right there. Boone has it stripped away. It will stay with Oklahoma State. And Fran, Mike Boynton might have been a little bit of a risky hire when he was promoted to be the head coach at Oklahoma State. But you've made this point over and over again. He was more than just the right hire. Well, he was like a lottery pick, really. He, he didn't have the experience of, a, of, like, hiring a senior, you know, or drafting a senior. He had lottery pick, pick talent, and Mike Holder saw it, and Mike Holder said his interview process was the entire year he was an assistant coach, just the way he carried himself on a daily basis. He break, Without ice likely again uh, tonight. Yep. We saw him last Monday run that right hand into the basket stanchion. By the way, I love the yeah, orange jacket being worn by uh, Mike Boynton tonight. You see that wrap around? Heartless to Maddox. Beautifully done. Good. Yes, they went to a little zone there. And uh, on Saturday, when they went zone to keep Reeves from driving, Harkless was effective in that high paint area. Good find inside. Boone left alone at the free throw line. Sit down. One of the things we'll be watching tonight, Bob, is each coach has a game plan. The other coach will adjust. And then the key is who is going to adjust to the adjustment. And that's a good sign. For two. We know Brady Mannix confidence was shaken after sitting out for two games and this is really welcome if you're a Sooner fan. Manic 
down defending Caleb Boone. He muscles his way to the goal with the left hand soft touch. Hot shooting start both ways. Oklahoma five of seven. Oklahoma State five for eight. Reeves connects. Yeah, they switched the, the big guy the out on him. Well, Bob, what they did was, we saw this Saturday, you saw it with Dick. When they switched the bigs onto Reeves, he's really a problem because of his ability to shoot it or drive it. Difference on the scoreboard so far is the three-point shooting game. Oklahoma, four for their first five from behind the arc. And Oklahoma State has yet to hit a triple. An early six-point lead for Oklahoma. Trying to bounce back and get their own fit. It's a really fun and wild scene when all the baseball fans got a chance to celebrate the return of the basketball team. Yep, and Mike Boynton has made sure, as coach of the Cowboys, that his players, in state and out, appreciate what this rivalry means to both universities and the people of the state of Oklahoma. And Kate Cunningham talked about that after the game, Bob, how important it was to get that win on the road. That's way short, and it's saved underneath by Harkless. In and out for Gibson for deep. Anderson will attack, little Euro step crossover, and he ends up in the stage. Boy, how about his end-to-end -end speed? The sophomore from Justin, Texas, who has really improved this year, probably as much as any player in the Big 12. Some of the people around this program say that he may be the second most important player on that roster, and that's a, a high that's a high compliment, Bob, given that last year he was lost, and he has really matured as a sophomore. Why? What, what improvement have you seen? I mean, I, I guess they always say, right, the best thing about freshmen yeah. is they become sophomores. Is it yes. that simple? Well, yes. Well, I think it's, yes. And in, in terms of experience, for sure, he's a better shooter. Remember, he was 2 for 26 behind the arc last year. And using his speed, this is kind of counterintuitive, but the game has slowed down for him. He's not running people over. He's channeling that speed even better because of the experience. Harkless with a step back. That's off the heel. Harkless has the same assignment he had on Saturday. He actually didn't do a bad job. K just hit some really tough shots. Anderson uses the screen. Into the corner. And that's a front rim. A little bit short for Farron Flavors. Switching out front right now. Let's see if Harmon can find a mismatch. Ran into the corner. Deflected pass still ends up with the Mojo Gibson with the shot clock winding down. So it will stay with OU as it's knocked out by Rondell Walker. Now, the building obviously not nearly at capacity, but the portion of fans that are allowed into Gallagher Ivor Arena, they're a factor. You know, there, there's an atmosphere in this building as there was a bit of an atmosphere in Norman on Saturday as well. Yeah, absolutely agree. Yep. Avion Harmon lays it in. Boy, is he playing well. Remember what they did. They took him off the point guard spot so Reeves could run the show. And all Davion has to worry right now about it, for this year anyway, is score the ball. And he's doing it really efficiently. Fancy dribble. Anderson and he draws the foul. Last 11 games, 15 points a game and 65% inside the arc. We know he can bang the three ball, but he gave up that uh, point guard position in a sense to share it with Reeves, and it really has paid off for Oklahoma this year. Cunningham leans, zip, and drop. Well, you saw that Saturday, Bob, 14 free throws, 40 points, but very efficient. I think I think he took 21 shots. 
But he got himself talking, to the foul line. Talking with Mike Boynton earlier today, we were talking about whether or not they chart all their shots, and obviously from an analytics standpoint, every team does. And I asked him, did you feel like Kate Cunningham took a bad shot in a 40-point game? He said, well, really? I don't know that Cade could take a bad shot, right? I mean, he's that good. Pretty much any shot he puts up has a chance to go in. But he seemed to love, even in a 40-point game, how he was just in the flow with all of his teammates and never forced it. Yeah, there's no question. And what I like about Cade Cunningham, and I said this earlier in the year, I felt he had to get himself involved earlier in games. And over the last few games, the sense of urgency of him leaving in a month is paying off, I believe. Another good look for Maddox. Jalen Hill did not score in Bedlam Chapter 1, so he'll go to the free throw line to try and get in the box score for the first time. Farron Flavors picked up the foul. We have a rare and incredible Super Tuesday triple header for you tomorrow on ESPN and the app. We'll start at 5 Eastern with two teams in the top six. Baylor meets West Virginia. Then number two, Michigan. Post number four, Illinois. And then at nine, we cap it off with Kentucky Ole Miss. A Super Tuesday triple header tomorrow beginning at 5 Eastern right here on ESPN. Yeah, we got we got some game in Morgantown tomorrow, Bob, and we talked to Scott Drew last night, and people have said to me, when are they going to get back to being Baylor? And I, I said, quite frankly, who knows? I mean, this is eight players had the virus, so who knows uh, how they'll recover? I don't know if they'll get back to where they were in those first, first 18 games. Hell ball will keep it, or give it to Oklahoma, rather, but yeah, you're right, Pratt was three weeks that basically Baylor was un unable to do much of anything. And you talked about the individual impact that a pause had on Brady Manick. He hasn't been himself for quite a while, although off to a great start tonight. How about if you were to expand that impact out basically to an entire team? And that's what Baylor yeah. is going through right now. Exactly. They, they played the other night in Brickson. Take nothing away from Kansas, who's playing their best basketball at the end of the year. Bill Self has done a great job in February. But I think anybody who's watched Baylor all season would say, that's not the team we've seen, uh, you know, in the first 18 games. And the interesting thing is, the mystery is, when will they get it back? We'll find out starting tomorrow. Even if they get it back. There's no guarantee it's going to go your way in Morgantown. That's right. Step back by Anderson. Won't go. Tipped around. And pulled down by Harmon. Good start for the Cowboys on the road. Crisp. Left try to hand off. And he's going to have to chase down the loose ball. And does. Only 11 on the shot clock was David. Is hounded by Bryce Williams down to five to shoot. Harmon's gonna have to put one up. He gets caught, gets it after Hill on the way. Moncrief attacks the rim, comes up short but draws the foul. Okay, Cunningham with a 40 point performance on Saturday afternoon. Is he the new guy? Talk to people around the NBA, the guys I talk to. Everybody's got it's a Penny Hardaway. It's a Luka Doncic Grant Hill comes to mind It doesn't really matter. This kid will make his mark on the league based on his own skills. Take a look Kate Cunningham one of three freshmen in the history of this league going back to 1996 to drop 40 in a game You saw it Saturday Bob I mean, How about Michael Beasley three times? Oh. Cunningham takes it away. Finds a trailer in Anderson. Anderson leans in and draws the foul. And Fran, the last time that we had an Oklahoma State game, obviously every game Cade Cunningham plays in, the topic of the NBA draft comes up. And is he the number one pick? And your take then was it was cloudy. 
you know, Jalen yeah. Suggs. There were some other names that could conceivably be the number one pick. With the way that he has played of late, and when you have a 40-point game with that kind of a stage and that kind of an audience on Saturday afternoon, has he now, in your mind, elevated yes. to the no doubt about it number one spot? Yeah, I think so, Bob, because he's the safest of the five. Let me just remind you, there are five really good players at the top of this draft. We've mentioned them. Suggs and Mobley, and then Jalen Green and Kuminga that are playing uh, in the G League. But Cade is safe because of his size, his skill level, his ability to shoot it, playmaking. And uh, I'm not part of the NBA draft industrial complex. That's why I don't like to say in November automatically the number one pick. But what he's done for me is I've watched him practice a lot and also play in these games. And in big games, Bob, that's been the most impressive thing. Not the shooting, but his ability to close out games. He did it at Wichita State. He's done it in the Big 12 this year. You saw it on Saturday. Well, he's going to have to start scoring some points in this game to keep up with Brady Manick. And now Anderson simply fumbles the ball out of bounds. And for Brady Maddock, we've talked about him. He must have felt over the last two or three weeks like he was shooting the ball at a teacup. And now tonight, he is three for his first three from three-point left. Yep, and remember, he hit that big one late in the game that uh, when we talked to Ron Kruger, he said, well, maybe that shot could get it going. But those numbers don't lie. And... Uh, there's no question, according to Lon Kruger, he was he was ravaged by the COVID virus. And now he plays playmaker. And Fonz Gibson on a backdoor cut. The goaltending stretches Oklahoma's lead to nine. Little Larry Bird right here. We've seen him knock down the three ball. And Brady Manick, young man from Harrow, Oklahoma, the senior. Take a look right here. Bird White with the shooting and the passing tonight. And a really good start, Bob, for the Sooners. You would expect that after Saturday's loss, they would come out ready to play, and they have. A three-point shooter is fouled. And as Alondis Williams clicked one, Bell Walker. And Rondell Walker will shoot three. Ron Kruger, let's see why he was upset. Did he kick his leg out? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I think that Alondis Williams clipped him. Let's take another look right here. Watch the right leg. I don't think so. If it, it if it did, he came late, but that's what Ron Cougar was concerned about. This season, they will call that a charge on the offensive player if there's a lot of contact. Brooks Wells felt not enough right there. Ron Cougar tried to make his case. Rondell Walker, who played AAU with Cade Cunningham the summer before his senior year of high school. And ends up in Stillwater as Cade Cunningham's teammate. And Rondell Walker has a chance to put together a really special Oklahoma State career. Oh, no question, Bob. The, these freshmen, Walker and Moncrief, particularly Anderson and Boone, the sophomores, he, uh, he and Boone as well. This is a nice nucleus for Mike Boynton as uh, Cade departs after this year. No too strong. Bryce Williams races the other way. Throws up a wide open and finds its way in. Circus shot right there by the junior college transfer. Little zone now by the Cowboys. They really mix and match those defenses. Manic, boy, that one looked good. That's his first miss from three point land. He's now three for four, but that one was about halfway down. Williams down the lane with the left hand across the foot. Now let's take a look at Bryce Williams, the transfer from Ole Miss. He's got one year left, and you see right here, watch him throw that hook shot. That is a circus shot. I'm not sure that's one he works on every day, but uh, give the young man from Tampa credit. The reason he is at Oklahoma State, he was coached in junior college by Eric Pastrana, the assistant coach at Oklahoma State, when he decided to leave Ole Miss last year. They had a spot for him here, and he's fit right in. Harmon and Harkless back in for OU. That foul, by the way, was on Alondis Williams. So he picked up two fouls in the last three trips down the floor. Oh, 
Mark is a play in the backcourt. Mark was pulled the string. Reeves gets the timeout and saves the possession for the Sooners lead. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. Bedlam Chapter 2. And Fran, 52 hours after Bedlam Chapter 1, you always wonder about adjustments. Have you seen any so far tonight from Oklahoma State? A couple things. O Oklahoma State is doing what they did at the end of your game that you called on Saturday, a little bit more mixing and matching the zones because Austin Reeves really gave them problems in man-to-man -man getting downhill. For the Cowboys, offensively, Oklahoma is trapping Kate Cunningham on some of those pick and rolls, but he sees over the whole court, so it hasn't been effective yet. It's about adjusting to the adjustments. Great coaches do that. <laughs> Comes up well short of the post. And Harkle is still on Cunningham. They're going to try to Cunningham keep him from getting into the gap. Juan Kruger told us yesterday, Bob, they would try to shrink the floor a little more on Cunningham's drives. Bryce Williams comes up just a little bit short, saved in the corner by Rondell Walker. Boone sets the screen, rolls to the goal, and steps on the end block. Oklahoma's last few possessions have been very sloppy. They're fortunate to still have the lead. You'll see uh, Bryce Williams is a dunk junkyard dog defender on Reeves right now. And they're going to a zone. And there's Harkless in the middle. Let's see if they attack it. Maybe and Harmon missed just about everything. And it looks like an offensive foul is going to be called on Caleb Boone. As he was charging down the lane. Five point lead for Oklahoma. Confidence was ravaged by the virus, but finally looks like he's getting his legs underneath him. They're going to meet that not only for now, their tournament and the NCAA tournament as well. I love how active this Oklahoma State zone is, but I got a question for you, Franny. Like, Kate Cunningham, he defers the first 10 minutes of the game. Is it by the side? You know, it, it was early in the year, Seth, no question. Lately, he's been more aggressive, but to your point, tonight, a little bit more passive, letting the game come to him. I think he's got to start to get it going soon. And you can see from Joe Lenardi's pathology, as Harkless goes back door, and he will go to the free throw line. Another nice play made by Brady Manick in the passing game. But only dropping one spot from the number two to number three overall seed is Baylor. Still comfortably on the one line. And, of course, that Super Tuesday triple header tomorrow, Fran, you and I will have the yeah. privilege of calling Baylor against West Virginia. So that would be a one seed against a two seed if it was the NCAA tournament tomorrow. Exactly, Bob. And, listen, I, I think the committee will... will uh, Way, way in favorably on Baylor. It's hard for me to imagine they won't be a number one seed regardless of what happens this week. They've got a tough road. Tuesday, Oklahoma State Thursday in Waco. I'm going to go to that game as a fan. And then Saturday, Texas Tech, I believe. Remember, Baylor has not won a conference championship in 71 years. And they can do it with a win or a West Virginia loss anytime this week. See how they're crowding Kate on the post-ups. Moncrief. Shies away from Manic. Kicks it back outside for a three from Bryce Williams. Well, he knocked down four of those on Saturday. He can shoot it. Good contest by Reeves. He got there a step late. That's finally the first three made by Oklahoma State. Oklahoma's got five triples already here in the first half. Foul called on Williams. And Williams has done a good job of harassing Austin Reeves, who I think is a shoe in to be first team All Big 12 this year. Maybe on Harmon, a little sloppy with the dribble, now picks it up with five to shoot, gets it back, and he'll put up a three. Brady Manick was trying for a back tap, and instead it looks like he may have drawn a foul. 
Cowboys were back, Bob, and watch the harassment now by uh, Oklahoma State. You see the double team on the pick and roll. Watch the lane. You see those black jerseys. Everybody's crowding in the paint. Elijah Harkless, who is their version. You look at that, look at the sandwiching inside. Elijah Harkless is, is the Sooners version of Marcus Garrett. The transfer from Northridge has really given them a huge lift this season. That's a charge. Oh, boy. Instead, it's called a block. Keith Kimball yep. tags Austin Reeves with the foul. That's his second. Look to me that Reeves got there. Let's take a look. I think he's legal. Remember, once he establishes two feet on the ground, which he has right there, to me, that is a charge. Now, it's a bang-bang play. Goes either way. To me, that's a charge. Austin Reeves, bad break. And I think he thinks so, too. And remember, Bob, you are allowed, once you establish legal guarding position, to slide sideways or obliquely. I'm not sure what obliquely means, but I know what sideways is. And I thought that they missed that call. That was a triple word score. You just dropped on me there. I, I'm, I'm a little lost as well. <laughs> More importantly, that's his second foul. So let's see if Juan Kruger rides, rides with the senior. I would. It was a nine-point lead for Oklahoma. It has now been erased by a 9-0 Oklahoma State run. Reeves will drive it here. And throw it down, but it hits the back of the rim. And Karam's all the way out to midcourt. Saved by Manic as Reeves had a lane to the basket and couldn't finish the dunk. Love the effort. He's got to be careful not to run anybody over. He'll lean in and go to the free throw line to try and score two. What he missed would look like a really easy two when he went right down the lane. Yeah, uh, he, yeah he wanted that one, especially after that call. He felt that uh, he was wrong on it. This kid reminds me, trying to figure out, Bob, he's got some Matthew Delvadova in him. You know, this is a guy that when he went to Wichita, he had been a point guard his whole life. The only problem was they had a kid there, and by the way, Austin Reeves' roommate a sophomore year, Landry Shamit. So Austin did anything he could to stay on the floor. He played off the ball. Ron Kruger this season moved him to the point guard, and it's really paid dividends for the Sooners. Cunningham stepped out. Well, friend, if I would have told you we would play the better part of 15 minutes here in the first half and Cade Cunningham would have yet to have a field goal after a 40-point game on Saturday afternoon, what would you think the score might be? And yet here's Oklahoma State still only down by two. It reminds me of what he did early in the year where he really tried to get his teammates involved and then had huge second halves. This is a kid, Bob, that averages about six or seven in the first half, Cunningham, and 11 or more in the second half. A very sloppy offense by the Sooners. Look at this. And Cunningham. It looks like he may have banked it off. Maybe on Harmon. Out of bounds. Great effort. And you're talking about a guy with a 7-2 wingspan, too. Watch him reach and knock that ball right off of Harmon. That is a great play right there. You know, individually, because he's not a great athlete by NBA standards, you know, there to me, there's some lateral quickness issues, but he's a really smart off-ball defender. Ayla Boone with the left hand, surrounded by three suitors in the lane, and still made the catch and finished. And he gets better and better. This is a kid that was offered a scholarship by Mike Boynton and his twin brother, Keelan, when they never when they hadn't even played a varsity game at Tulsa Memorial. They were going into their junior year. Manic. He oh, knocks boy. down another three, his fourth in five tries. Boy, this is welcome for Alon Kruger and that coaching staff and that team for Brady Manic to be back on track. If I'm Scott Drew, I'm watching Brady Manick play tonight going, I hope that looks like my whole team beginning tomorrow as Moncrief throws one down. Boy, Bryce Williams has done a really good job of bothering Reeves. 
Reeves can't convert down the lane. Here comes Cunningham. Still looking for his first basket. Decides to set up Walker in the corner. You see Harmon co-piloting piloting now. Manic heat check. That's an air ball. See that crowd right there? Watch the jerseys. They're kind of working so he doesn't get to the basket easily. There's a three that gives Oklahoma State the lead. Knocked down by Rondell Walker. Did you notice Walker's man work in the lane to kind of crowd Cunningham? He waited and baited him and then kicked it out, and there's no way the defender could get back to Walker. Really good play right there. Rocha Gibson threw it behind Manning. Bryce Williams, the floater won't go. Tapped around, and back the other way. Comes OU. Gibson wide open for three. That won't go. The tip follow missed by Manning. But he tipped it back to Harmon. He gets another. And his third effort gets him to the line. But Brady Manning looks like a completely different player. This league... With seven teams inside the top 20, all of these teams, I believe, can make noise in the NCAA tournament this year, including the Oklahoma Sooners when this guy's back on track. Well, if Manic knocks this free throw down, it'll give him 15. 39 times in his career at Oklahoma, he has had 15 or more in a game. And Oklahoma is 30 and 9 in those 39 games so he has always been kind of an as brady manic goes so go the sooners type player and the fact that he's having this kind of a first half bodes really well not only for oklahoma tonight friend i would think but for the rest of their season without a question they have developed their bench they go nine deep but the two guys that are keys for them three really Harmon reeves and manic walker that's over the backboard yeah, good challenge that time. Remember, Reeves playing with two. He's got to be really careful. But I love this, Bob. You know what? Juan Kruger's been around a while. Austin Reeves is a 50-year senior. He picked up his second foul midway through the first half. And he's done exactly what you would expect from a veteran, high IQ guy. That is keep himself out of foul trouble. There's that little help, uh, half trap and a half right there. Eight on the shot clock. Harmon against Cunningham. Gives it up to Emoja Gibson. And he swoops down the lane. Well, that's a nice play because, remember, he can really shoot the ball from three. They chased him off the line, and the, the Waco youngster, who was not recruited by Baylor, gives them a basket and the lead. By the way, Baylor has pretty good guards, Bob. This one lets you know. <laughs> Their depth chart at that position looks okay. The turnover yes, for does. Oklahoma State. <laughs> and Cunningham still without a field goal here in the first half after Saturday's 40-point performance. And yet Oklahoma State is right there, down by only two. And Saturday, full day of college basketball across all of our networks, highlighted by these two key matchups on ESPN and the app. It's a sonic blockbuster when Illinois takes on Ohio State at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, and then Chapter 2 of Duke, North Carolina. Both games are Sonic Blockbusters on Saturday afternoon and evening here on ESPN, and of course, all our games available on the ESPN app. The Big 12 has got some great games this week. Remember, they ended the regular season on Saturday, but left that last week open for postponed games. And, Bob, we got a great one tomorrow. There's some other good ones later in the week. Texas OU Thursday night and the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City next week. I know you're as excited as I am. Well, friend, no one wants to hear us complain about our jobs. Who has it better than us? But how excited is our entire crew? to get to go to Kansas City and see these teams play in person after watching them virtually the whole year. I mean, this might be the best Big 12 tournament in recent memory, and we get to be there. It's going to be a treat as Cunningham comes up with the loose ball. 
Walker swoops across the lane. That's rebounded by Manic. Avery Anderson tripped up at the opposite end. And he's playing with a limp now as Manic tied up by Cunningham. Hell ball will give it to the post. Let's watch Avery Anderson retreating his giddy up. Good to see him stay on the floor as he awkwardly went to plant his foot back defending Davion Harmon. And it looked like he wanted to go one way and his knee went the other. And yet he has shaken it off. An important friend because they're already without ice likely for yet another game tonight. Exactly. And he saved the basket, I believe, on that hustle play. Oh my goodness. Why not Keelan? Yeah. Who can play on the perimeter? He stretches the court. Not a great shooter this year. Gibson from the wing. That won't go. And that will take us to halftime. So Cade Cunningham without a field goal in the first half. And yet Oklahoma State. Down. From COVID, best performance he's had in the last couple weeks. If you're Mike Boynton, and you know all of that attention is going to continue to flow Cade Cunningham's way, what are you doing to try and free him up just to get him some looks? Well, I think he's got to do it on his own because at six foot eight, he can often make defenders invisible, Bob. He did it on Saturday. He has to get more aggressive. Ironically, this season, as crazy as it sounds, the less shots he takes, the better this team is. But posting them up right now is what they're trying to do. But look where Manic is. And, the goal. and finishing with the left hand is Caleb Boone. Now that basket happened for Boone because Manic helped off on Cunningham. So his teammates are picking up the slack. Manic steps back. Cunningham, cross-court pass red by Davion Harmon. He finds Gibson in transition. That's short. And it's knocked out by Manic. Well, this is sort of the way Kate Cunningham in, uh, approached the first part of the season. Don't force it. He's only taken two shots. Get your teammates involved. And then we've seen time and time again, Bob, where he will get more aggressive for his own offense. But that last basket was because of the uh, amount of attention he got. Avery Anderson, the floater, soft touch. And that's another example. When you go and play Cunningham away from the ball that way, it becomes four on four. And Avery Anderson continues to show us that he knows what to do when he gets into the painted area. Keep your eye on this matchup, Bob. Bryce Williams on Reeves. And this is the sloppy pass as Reeves threw it a little too high. And Manic couldn't haul it in. That's the eighth Oklahoma turnover. And give Mike Boynton credit because he's seeing Reeves more zone tonight. They pick him up man to man, but it really is a zone, and there's nowhere for him to drive it. That looks like a moving screen is going to be called on. Caleb Boone. That's his third. He becomes the first player for either team with three fouls. Watch this, Bob. Yep, see, you see Boone. He, his feet get wide. He can't do that. And then he reaches out. And uh, as a sophomore now, he should know that. You see this zone? Take a look. It's a 2-3 zone. And they're all over Reeves. Armin for the top. In and out. Walker stuffed by Manic. Boom. That stripped away. Reeves has it for OU. And then he's fouled a cheap one from Rondell Walker, who thought, I think, he was fouled when he lost his yes. footing on the way to the basket on his drive. Well, and I thought Brady Manic committed a foul here. Take a look. Watch Walker. Now, that's not a foul. But to me, that is. And then they're always going to call Rondell that Walker trick. picks one up. That's his second. Yeah, a lot of zone tonight from, from Mike Boynton. 
Gibson knocks it down, and we're tied again. That's the danger because Emoja Gibson can really light it up. Good job by Reeves. There was no Velcro on that pass to Reeves. He got rid of it quickly. Boone at Manic with the left hand. Beautiful. Beautiful, Bob. Good job by, of him pivoting away from pressure and to make a left-handed jump hook like that is really well done. This young man continues to get better in the low post. He stays perfect from the field. Beyond Harmon, a little bit short. Go to work, big guy. Once again, it's one on one. Boone looks diagonal in the corner. Walker. And Brady Maddock pulls it down for Oklahoma. Austin Reeves has not gotten near the paint tonight. Sets up Heartless here. That hit the backboard first. Avery Anderson tries to cross over. A lot of contact. No call. Reeves goes down. Anderson lays it in. And we've got a flop warning. And it looks like Keith Kimball is going to warn Reeves about flopping. What happens there is they let the play finish. Take a look now. And that I would call that a flop. They, but they let the play continue. Yeah, I, I think he flops. And then they lay it in, and then Keith Kimball will blow that whistle and give Austin Reeves a flop warning. The next flop on Oklahoma will be a technical foul. Lon Kruger doesn't agree. Oklahoma State trailed by 10 at one point on Saturday. Found a way to win by four in overtime. This is their largest lead tonight by four as Manic cuts it down to two. So you can see it's Bedlam, right? I mean, that, that's how close you would expect these games would be played. As Bryce Williams is rebounded by Manic. Reeves took another shot, and they let it play on. Avion Harmon breaks That's a streak nice. of five consecutive misses. Great basketball by Oklahoma because Reeves, as the co-pilot, took a mental health break in the corner. He's still rubbing his chin. Avion Harmon saw it, got downhill, got to the basket. Avery Anderson again in close. Bryce Williams has done a great job on Reeves tonight. There's been less switching. You see, you see oh, that's good defense. Parkless stepped on the sideline. An Oklahoma turnover. A two-point lead for Oklahoma State. Trying to win back-to-back -back Bedlam games. Switching it. Temporarily, but watch Williams work to get back in front. Manic's open. They run it, Manic, throw it to the corner. He steps out of bounds. Excellent adjustment by Mike Boynton. That is the game within the game tonight. What if these two teams meet again in Kansas City? What would be the game well, within we'll... the game within the game, right? That'd be fun. At, that's exactly right, Bob, and that's what great coaches do. Cunningham still without a field goal. And yet his team leads by two, coming up on six minutes gone by in the second half. Emoja Gibson down the lane, and it looks like he warded off and has called for an offensive foul. Well, part of the reason that Gibson is driving tonight, normally a shooter, is that Austin Reeves has been rendered so, so far ineffective at getting to the lane because Boynton's adjustment has been to really do a good job of keeping that defender in front of Reeves. Cunningham's oh, doubled trapped. again. And the ball movement gets it to the front of the rim. You see, Bob, there's another example right there. Cade Cunningham at six foot eight took on the double team and allowed his teammates to play four on three. Really well done. 
That's why he's one of the final five for the Koozie Award, right, Fran? Because he's just so yes. unselfish. He's got that point guard mentality. Well, he's affecting the game, but he's not scoring, Bob. Reeves, five to shoot, spins down the lane. And it looks like he will draw the foul. And that's one of the rare times tonight Bryce Austin Williams. Reeves has gotten space to get by Williams, who's done a really good job on him tonight. That's Bryce Williams third. We've got Kate Cunningham and Austin Reeves. The two leading scorers, number one and number two in the Big 12, they have not even yet combined for 10 points in tonight's game. Well, you got one guy who's coached five different schools to NCAA tournaments and the other guy who's a rising star. So even in the course of 48 hours, Bob, again, adjustments to, to make sure those guys on each side don't hurt your team. Cunningham again double teamed and throws it along the baseline. Reeves read it and got the steal. Harkless left alone at the free throw line. Knocks it down. Nice patience by Elijah Harkless, the transfer from Northridge, who has become a mainstay for Ron Kruger. Uh, that's how you set a record at Oklahoma State for shooting <laughs> percentage. And that is the pace that Caleb Boone is on. If you don't miss, there's a pretty good chance you're going to set the record. <laughs> I'd say 7-7 seven of seven will help that record. What do you think? Mannix to the corner. Moja Gibson. You got to space it a little better. Reeves. Again to Gibson. He'll float one up. Tipped by Manic and it won't go. And here's Anderson. Throws it right to Harkless. Harkless crosses over. Score the basket plus the foul for the X Factor for Oklahoma. Elijah Harkless does it again. Does this remind you of Kansas's Marcus Garrett? Take a look. We told you he's a dirty work guy. Here comes the outlet pass. Watch him jump the lane and then finish to the basket. When you look at this league and you think of guys like Garrett and Osa Boyan and Mark Vidal, throw this guy in there because he does Oklahoma's dirty work. He's got four points now, but he also has four rebounds and three assists. And on Saturday, ten points, four assists, five steals. It just, he always seems to have that checking every box, box score line. Well, and he did, he's doing a great job defensively tonight. Look at these hands. Steal by Gibson. Harkless leaves it for Reeves. Oklahoma's got the lead back. How about Austin Reeves? Just lighting it up. Good, good flip behind by Harkless. Didn't run anybody over. Let's see if they can crowd the lane again. Watch him double team a little bit there. Cunningham kicks it out. And there's a very three that gives us our eighth lead change as Bryce Williams does it again. And that's that's so reminiscent of Saturday when Cade Cunningham got loose and found Reeves opposite. Brady Manick this time will drive it and score. Oh, this is a good sign for Oklahoma heading into the end of the season to see Brady Manick playing the way he's playing tonight. Williams and Harkless both end up on the deck. It looks like we've got Harkless hit by Joey Brackets to not even make the NCAA tournament. But in January, they became the first team since 1974 to beat four top ten teams in the same month. And much, Fran, like the Alabamas and Michigans of the world, and they have just rocketed up the top 25 pole. And they got as high as number seven. A loss to Kansas State knocked them back outside of the top ten, but this is an Oklahoma team I would think that is very dangerous from March Madness. Yeah, absolutely, Bob. Those seven losses, five by five points or less, and four to top ten teams. So they don't have a bad loss on their schedule, and it's just indicative of what we've seen in the league this year, and that is all of these teams can make noise in March. See if Reeves can exploit the mismatch. 
Shot fakes. And he kicks it back outside to Harmon. Who knocks down a three? Well, that's great patience by Austin Reeves. He came to that one-two stop in the lane, didn't travel, and a good kick out. Davion Harmon continues to stay red hot. Jalen Hill guarding Cunningham now. There's the crowd. And there's the foul. Yep. Now this time, now you've got the switch of the big on Reeves, so he's going to exploit it. Take him downhill, but watch him be under control. Pivot, pivot, kick out, and then knocks it down. Harmon with a good delivery from behind the arc. Really well done. But what's more surprising, Cade Cunningham only has two points? Or that he's only taken three shots. Well, you know what's interesting, Bob? They actually, this season, when he takes 13 shots or less, they're 11 and 1. Now, three shots is a little bit overdoing it, I think. But remember, down the stretch of this game, he has no problem taking over. I'm anxious to see how this uh, future NBA star takes over the last nine minutes. There's Reeves. He hits a three. Man, how about this guy? He's got, I'll tell you, he's had just about as good a year statistically as Kate Cunningham have. Both have had 40 in the game. Cunningham misses. Manic rebounds. Let's watch the ball screens now. Reeves can't do it this time. Kate Cunningham has the rebound. Look at that attention. Somebody's open. Bryce Williams leans in. Too strong. Offensive rebound. Well, we haven't said Emmy Montgomery's name a lot tonight, but he is an excellent offensive rebounder for a freshman. Young man out of Toronto, the same school, Orangeville, that produced guys like Jamal Murray. Reeves this time doesn't miss the dunk. <laughs> wow. If you haven't seen Austin Reeves this year, you're missing a treat. This guy has swag. Cunningham. He'll go back to the free throw line. Now take a look. You're talking 6-5. They think they've got a switch. There's the switch. No, nope, it's a bad switch, and he gets to the rim. So there we go. Take a look. This is the game within the game. He exploits the defense. He's just waiting to see who he's going to attack. That time it was the big guy. He gets to the basket. You know, Bob, this young man, uh, his dad, Brian Reeves, uh, played at Arkansas State, but his dad grew up in Kokomo, Indiana, and in 1989, actually played in the Indiana State Championship game against, you ready for this? Lawrence North High School and Eric Montrose. And so, yeah, he's from Arkansas, but he's got a lot of Indiana in his game. Back to the zone to keep Reeves from driving. Panic double team, Emoji Gibson. It's a three. If you're going to play them zone, you got to know where Gibson and Manic are. They played the zone to, to guard Reeves, but Mon Kruger makes him pay. Moncrief stuffed underneath the rim. Oh, he's got Manic. Reeves to Manic allows the flyby. That one's a brick, though. Kate Cunningham, this time trying to force the issue, finds a trailer. And he'll get it back. Cunningham spins, leans in. Gets the ball for his first field goal with 7 minutes and 15 seconds to go. Guess what time it is, Bob. It's that time. It's game time. There's the zone. It's a 1-1-3. Better know the shooters. Reeves penetrates. The finger roll won't go. Here comes Cunningham. 
Trying to go coast to coast. And back to buckets for Payne Cunningham. And it's a one-point game. Guess what time it is, Bob? Yep. Hill tried to lob it to Manic. It was broken up by M.A. Montreal. Cunningham. The extra pass out to the wing to Williams. He knocks down another three. Six made threes in the game for Oklahoma State. We'll check that five, and Williams has three of them. Oh, yeah. For Oklahoma State. Why? I don't think it matters to Kate Cunningham whether he scores or not. This is a guy that is just concerned about winning. He won at Montbird Academy under Kevin Boyle. Where, by the way, they'll have four first-round picks this year that he played with, three of them and him. He's just concerned about winning, and that's refreshing. In that sense, Bob, there's some LeBron in him, you know? He's looking to get his teammates going. Oji Gibson could not hit from the corner. Rebound to Caleb Boone. Oh, watch Caleb Boone run. Great job. Moncrief reverses at home. I'll tell you, Moncrief got that basket because Caleb Boone, uh, Boone ran the court. Manic had to guard him, and Moncrief snuck behind the defense. Look at this. Keelan Boone is guarding Reeves now at 6'9". Harkless to Emoja Gibson. This time he doesn't miss, and it's a one-point game. Oh, he's not hesitating. He is not hesitating. 43% in Big 12. Coming here smoothly to the goal. All you can say, Bob, is he knows it's time. Reeves double team. Good help. Yep. Manic to Harkless. He's got it. 13 made threes for Oklahoma, and they've got it tied at 70. And I think Boynton will live with that. They took the ball out of Reeves' hands. That was what we call a short roll by Manic. He didn't roll to the basket. He rolled into the open area. Kevin Boone has it stripped away. Maybe on Harmon. Hands it off to Reeves and a chance for Oklahoma to take the lead back. See the double team. Where's the open man? Barkless goes to Cunningham. Charge. Gives it up. Reeves left alone for two. Caleb Boone. Two. A toe tap along the end line to avoid stepping out. Stayed inbounds. Kept his heels up off the court. And Oklahoma State with a chance to retake the lead. He's trying to put those black jerseys in front of Cage. He's 6'8", so he can find the open man. Oh, and it's Moncrief. He leans in, and he will be at the free throw line when we come back. Under four minutes to go. A quadruple header we will have for oh, you man. in the quarterfinals, including what could be Bedlam Chapter 3 if form holds. <laughs> Bob, yeah, that's going to be great. But Kansas, Texas, are you kidding me? Texas, the sixth seed, who can go to a Final Four. It's crazy. We've been around this league for a while. And on occasion, six teams or seven go into the tournament. And they're nine seeds, they're ten seeds. You know they're not going to make a lot of noise. This is a rare occasion where all seven of these teams heading to the postseason can literally get to the Sweet 16. You've got seven Big 12 teams ranked inside the top 18 and two of them going head to head here oklahoma and oklahoma state bedlam a two-point game three and a half minutes to go harkless with a bounce pass Harmon for the lead and the rebound to m.a moncrief that shot was a little strong but a good look by Harmon. good drive and kick Boom. Goes right at Manic. Reed saves it. 
Good hustle play by Reed. Made sure he didn't, even though he was underneath the Cowboy basket, he looked for an outlet. He found one. Moja Gibson in the mid-range. Offensive rebound, Manic. Outside to Harmon for three. That won't go. Manic, another try, and he draws a foul. Another hustle play by Brady Manic, who has had arguably his Becca call bedlam almost this entire league. But Kate Cunningham's 40 gave Oklahoma State a four-point overtime win on Saturday. Tonight, Brady Manic. 20 points for only the second time this season. The first time he had 20 was in the opening game against Texas San Antonio. So, Fran, he has picked quite the stage to ring the bell for 20 for the second time this year. And now it looks like a foul on the inbound. Might be going against Oklahoma State. Let's see. There was a timeout call. Balance. Because they've done a pretty good job of keeping him out of the lane tonight, even though he's got 16, 6, and 4. Now they're going man. A lob into Manic. Hands it off to Reeves. Watch the two man pop. game. And yep. it's kicked, it looks like. Out of bounds off of Bryce Williams. And that is a sneaky great play by Bryce Williams because they had to pick and pop. And that's why deflections are important. That was not a turnover. But because he kicked it, he took away Manic's ability to maybe pick and pop three. There's the switch. Big on Little. Reeves for three. Too strong. Loose on the deck. Manic. Manic tries to tie up, and it looks like he will tie up Walker. So Oklahoma State with the arrow will get the basketball. But another hustle play by Brady Manic. Now on this end, it's going to be Cade Cunningham. The key now for Oklahoma is how much individual attention do you put on him? And if you bring the double off these ball screens, can he find one of his open teammates? We know the answer, but now it's a matter of executing. Here's the double. Advantage Oklahoma. Cade uh, on the double and threw it inside. And what we've seen tonight from Boone is eight for nine in the low post. Avion Harmon scoops and scores. And an official's timeout. That means the crowd at gallagher Iba not happy because normally even off a made basket, Oklahoma State likes to push and maybe get down the floor and see if they can get an open look in transition And the officials took that opportunity away by calling time on their own Again Bob, let's keep watching that soon defense on Saturday All the one-on-ones led to Cade scoring 40 points tonight down the stretch They're they're showing hard and sometimes doubling and remember, because of his size, he can find the open man. There's another example. Williams down the lane. Stripped away by Manic. Harkless. Tries to go at Cunningham. Cunningham. What a block by Boone. Takes it away. What a block by Caleb Boone with four fouls. It looked like Harkless got to the rim, but that's the big man running the floor. One minute to go. Cunningham for three. In and out. A back tap by Keelan Boone. Harkless dives and draws a foul. Let's go back to this great hustle play. Watch Boone now. He's going to come into your picture out of nowhere. This is what we call the unknown runner. The big guy that will run the floor never knowing whether he's going to be involved in the play. And then there's the foul. Unfortunately, only the sixth team foul for Oklahoma State. Oklahoma still has a foul to give. 50 seconds to go. Oh, 
Here's Boone. Reeves turns it over. Bryce Williams takes it away. Lobs one. Reeves tries to break it up at the rim and fouls Boone. This ball slipped out of Austin Reeves' hands, but Keith K, watch this. He's going to try to pass it, and he loses his footing because he thought he had the backdoor cut, and that was great defense by Caleb Boone, and he almost made a surface catch on the other end. Caleb Boone, first trip to the line at 65% on the season. I don't know, Bob. I think we might be playing more basketball soon. <laughs> we know how those this guys feel. Over. <laughs> oh, that is Bedlam personified. We went to overtime on Saturday. Oklahoma State won by four. It's a one-possession game with Oklahoma. You just don't want to take a contested bad three. For Cowboys now, what you don't want to do is foul a three-point shooter. Uh, a lot of time left. Mike Boynton is very comfortable playing man or zone. He's got the good fastball, and his zone is a pretty good curveball. Looks like man. Reeves. Yep. Half minute to play. Reeves to Manic in the corner for the tie off the heel. The long rebound is run down in the corner by Walker. Gets it to Cunningham. And now Oklahoma has to fire. Well, they got the shot they wanted. They run this a lot. They put Manic on the block. They screen in for him. And he got a really good look in the corner. So they went for the three ball. And, and Brady Manic, who's had a really good night tonight, 20 points. Take a look now. Watch Manic on the block. There's going to be a go screen, a screen in, and you can't get a better shot than that. You got to live with that. It's a shot he will make, assuming that we go forward and he's back to the Brady Manic we remember. That's a big one. Dave Cunningham makes it a four point game. job he has done it's still water what a job the young man from Tulsa Oklahoma Caleb Boone has done tonight he is our player of the game brought to you by Phillip 66 one miss from the field 17 points and nine rebounds down to 15 seconds to go maybe on Harmon he will drive it around Cunningham can't get it to go tipped around Reeves Flips one up and in, plus the foul. And it's not over yet. Oh, that's a bedlam kind of play How about by that? Austin Reed. Yep. He flipped it up and spun it off the glass. Take a look now. Watch the 7-2 wingspan by Cunningham and watch Reeves right here. Proper hand development. PhD right there. Good spin off the glass. There's the drive, the challenge, and watch Reeves. He's lurking, and then he just gets it up. Little English like Willie Moscone. A chance to cut it to two. And he's the best free throw shooter in the Big 12. All right, press and foul to right go. away. Yep, foul right away. Well, they got it into the right guy. Just after the second leading score in the Big 12 completes the old fashioned three point play. A smart team gets it to the right player because Kate Cunningham not only is the leading scorer in the Big 12, but a big reason why he's 85% at the line. Well, he loves these situations. That much we've seen in his one season in Stillwater. He loves the pressure. Oklahoma just needs one miss. And remember, this is the one, one. Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt is on deck the next one the next one will be easier bob he rattled that one in this one will likely be a swish 
Six seconds. If there's a miss, look for Reeves to go coast to coast. And Juan Cooper's going to use that final timeout. That is this listening at 5 Eastern tomorrow. Well, for this to work out for Oklahoma, they need an 85% free throw shooter to miss one here to give them a chance. There's the switch, Fran. It's not to be it for OU, you would think. Well, right now, if you're Oklahoma State, you just don't foul. Just back up, retreat, make them shoot a tough shot. Do not go, do not go near a three-point shooter. Here's Davion Harmon. For three, that's off the mark. And that will end it. Oklahoma State in overtime on Saturday. One by four. Oklahoma State tonight.